Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome back to High Above La Molina. We are in sunny Spain for another day of the World Para Alpine Skiing World Cup. Very good morning to you. Join us on the chairlift, heading up to the top here of the course, where action is about to get underway for run number two of the slalom. We've seen so many fantastic races this week, but today it was all about the thrills and spills. Loads crashing out in run number one. Let's take a look at the highlights. Yeah, thank you very much, Alan. A bit of a delay up at the top, so I found a couple of friends to come and chat to. The leaders of the slalom currently for the Women's VI, Bobby and Mel. Hello, how are we doing? Great run uh, earlier on this morning, and you lead the way. How was it? Uh, it was good. We just basically tried to put a really solid run together. We know we can ski good slalom, and we actually try <laughs> and relax and just get a bit of a flow going. So we did that, and luckily enough, it was enough for first place going into second run. Yeah, I know slalom is your guys' favourite event, and there's not been an awful lot of it th this year since the World Championships. How nice is it to be back skiing it? It's great. Yeah, yeah so we, <laughs> we actually did our first run in Gates in about a month this morning, so it was good fun. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Bobby, have you, have you missed it? Oh, so much. It's been great. Nice move. And... Well, great to see some new names on top of the pile after run number one, but can they hold on after run number two? We're hopefully going to see some new gold medalists this week, which would be very nice indeed. There's still plenty of work to do, though, coming up in run number two. We're on our way now down to the finish line to speak to those gold medalists when they cross the line. But for now, though, I'm going to hand you over to your race commentator to guide you through all the action. It's Alan March. Yeah, thank you very much to Stephen Jameson. Look at the blue skies, like being on holiday it really is. However, somebody's put a wonderful ski slope right in the middle of it. Hashtag at Para Alpine. That's what you need. If you want to get in touch with us, you can do so. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram as well for all the extra content you may want. As for the weather, it's 8 degrees around these parts, a high of 14 at some point today. The uh, competition will be done and dusted well before that happens. Second course setting of the day, 60 gates. There were only 55 this morning. Falco Tiesma of the Netherlands team has set that. 200 metres is the drop. Who will reign victorious on day one of the slalom? Women's VI category then. Mena Fitzpatrick. Bottom of the pile, 105.03. Uh, a few mishaps on the run meant that she will go from third to big ass to try and chase down Veronica Eigner. And indeed, Melissa Perrine, who went 57.10 this morning. Just 
soaking it in. And the reason for some of the uh, disgruntled faces, we went from uh, 56 athletes this morning to 37. There was a fair few DNFs out on the course. And we are just about ready for Mena Fitzpatrick and her guide, Jennifer Keogh. So uh, Jen on the right, the orange bib with the G on it. Can the reigning Paralympic champion come up with something nigh on unbelievable to resurrect day one of the slalom? Or is this just about consolidation of points in the women's VI first event? Kyo. Remember the job of a guide to instruct through those Bluetooth headsets in the helmets. Patrick again, really needing something out of the ordinary. Seem to affect the top two. Eigner and Perrine will battle it out for those World Cup points. The leader is the young Austrian at the moment. This one much better from Fitzpatrick and Keo. The clock is still running, so we'll try and bring you the official time for that in a moment. Hopefully that won't cause us a delay. Eigner is out on the course. As I mentioned, she was just 15 at the beginning of this season. It was a good run from Veronica Eigner, guided by her sister, remember? Elizabeth. Green, buoyant from the giant slalom activities. It's just a little bit too good from the first run. Patrick's time came through at 2.02.68 in total, so that's what the Eigners need to do. That shouldn't be a problem from here, and it won't be. 153.44, very good indeed. Challenge set then. Experienced Melissa Perrine, a completely different guide this season. Twenty-one thirty-nine through this section will give us a clear indication as to whether the Australian or the Austrian is leading in it. Well, it looks like the Austrian has now got the slight advantage. Perrine down by over a second. Have they got something big in the bottom half then? Perrine and Kelly. World Championship, silver medalists. 153-44, Eigner is going to take this. Good run from Veronica Eigner and her sister Elizabeth. And I'm sure they will be delighted when they speak with Stephen Jameson in a little while. But that is a tremendous second run from the Austrian pairing. They've switched it around. As expected, Fitzpatrick had much too much to do to try and catch hold. So, uh, 
Green unable to match the first run. And of course, we'll have the standing and sitting events for the women. But let's go and hear from Stephen Jameson. He's down in the winner's area. Yeah, thank you very much, Alan. Down at the finish line here. I've taken my coat off. It's nice and hot down here. And two girls who are on fire on the slope were you guys. Veronica, Elizabeth, congratulations on the win. The first time we've seen you since Zagreb. How nice is it to be back and on top of the podium? Um, yes, I'm very happy. There's, there's, um, the snow was very soft and the run was not easy. But we are very happy that we can win this race. And how nice is it to be back on the tour? Because I know you had to miss the World Championships. How much have you been looking forward to getting back skiing against some of the best? <laughs> um, yes, um, we are very happy that we can win this race. Yesterday was not so good because we are the second place. And yes, uh, we are very happy that we can the first place. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Veronica, congratulations. Alan, Betty. experience you get better on the mountain you get better speaking to Stephen Jameson as well it's uh, not easy you forget that uh, Veronica herself is uh, just 16 years old so Beauchet leads from Turgeon who was the World Cup leader coming in to this event here in La Molina how will that change Ellie Kunkel look good in third position this is one of two Spanish athletes that started. We weren't without difficulties in the women's events either. Rachel Martinez Muniz is uh, going to be first up. Ready, go. Muniz, 27 year old, the impairment type for Muniz cerebral palsy effects in both her arms and her legs so the constant fight on this mountain with her impairment let alone the turns themselves not expecting to find medal positions Muniz this is more case of self-achievement the ethos for some of the athletes is that some people with the same impairments wouldn't try these ladies and gentlemen that we watch day in day out constant battle Looking solid enough to make it to the bottom then. Final few gates for Raquel Martinez Muniz. So that's El Pemble. Born in the UK. Pemble will be intending to finish as high as she can. You never want to drop a place from the first run. It's always the intention to go higher. That is what Mel Pemble, competitor in Pyeongchang, still just 18 as well, already 22 seconds inside. steady hasn't struggled throughout and will be well inside the 243.60 that was set so 210.91 is now the new lead time Ami Hondo 
Next on course. Just 22 from Tokorozawa. And already four and a half seconds inside. Inside the 210, so Hondo 204.58. Still five more to come. Would be very harsh to think that she could make the podium from there, but mistakes have been made by plenty of athletes so far. The course proving tricky under the skis and slippy. So Ana Maria Rida. Next out. Five seconds up where it counts. The 18 year old then. Well, it'll be four to come after her. This is the first time we've had inside two minutes. That's a good run from Rita. Wiping another five seconds or so. So she is going to win with a Four now, Ramsey. Already a double Paralympian. Three world championships behind her. Three point two two. To the line, 2.69 inside of Anna Rida. Now Ali Kunkel, ooh, lopping behind Ramsey. Is not what she will want to do. Very impressive this morning, the 17 year old. Needs to remain problem free on the bottom section and find a little bit more speed to claw that gap back. Or was Ramsey's run just too quick for the young American? Oh, a slip from Kunkel right at the end. Well, she's going to make sure she gets around the gates. This is a good test of. Courage and character, oh, it's just too much. And Well, Concourse fight to finish ends right near the end. Oh, and she'll be despairing of that. Now, Frédéric Turgeon starts this run in second. It's where she finished the World Championship. Tears of emotion. Already 0.58 ahead at this section. A mistake like Kunkel at this point. This is where Ali Went out, no such troubles. Oh, 0.46 ahead of Ramsey. Well, it's going to be 
two podium places for Canada. Is there a rare mistake for Marie Boschet? We haven't seen one all season. Not in the World Cup, not in the World Championships. And she is 4.39 seconds ahead. Really has been one of those years where Boucher has just been worlds apart. However, we saw Jeroen Kampscher make a mistake a little bit earlier on. Another man that's been dominant this season. Boucher. As you often see on the social media post, the brilliant Boucher. And it's looking that way again. 155.83. It's going to be inside 150. That is remarkable. Another magnifique performance from Marie Boucher. The Lamelina course is in awe. O'Shea takes it from Turgeon, Ramsey and Rida after that. <laughs> Ali Kunkel right at the bottom there would have been distraught at that. Let's go and hear from a very familiar person, Stephen Jameson. Now, welcome down to the finish line with our winner of the women's standing, Marie Boucher. Marie, yesterday you told me you are nervous about the slalom because anything can happen. Now you've got down two runs. You're the gold medalist. How do you feel about it now? Uh, it's cool. <laughs> uh, the second run was the second run was very, very uh, exciting, playful, and joyful. <laughs> so I'm very happy with my second. Little bit disappointed about my first because I don't arrive to give all and. <laughs> Ski, uh, ski free. I don't know if you <laughs> you can understand that, but always the first one is difficult for me. But I'm very happy to to do my second like that with uh, with this ski and uh, the weather <laughs> was very warm too, and it was very difficult to to to, to find every uh, feelings at the start. But finally, it's. Very cool. It's a spring race. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, I'm going to let you go now to get the deck chair out to do a bit of sunbathing. I think that's a good idea. Gold medalist once again. Congratulations, Marie. Alan, back to you. Deck chair time for Boucher. The French team have been getting used to doing the double in the women's and men's standing. Will Boucher be joined by Boucher? Find out a little bit later on in this broadcast. Stevens, Muraoka and Forster, they'll go in that order. The world and Paralympic champion had much the better time of everyone this morning. Maurice Stevens, you say, former Paralympic champion. Thirty four years old now. Took the Super G and the downhill titles back in 2006. Has medalled on a frequent basis ever since then. Again, uh, only three athletes in this event. It is one of the disciplines that could do with a few more. Of course, Anna Schaffelhuber, not part of the World Cup circuit at the back end, but got a few retirements after Pyeongchang. So you fancy yourself as a sit skier and you're watching on in awe and amazement at what these ladies are doing, then try and get involved. Use the Paralympic.org website to maybe find some information and where perhaps locally you can get involved in. But at the moment, we have a good mixture of young and older athletes. We could 
do with a few more. 2.06.45 is the combined time for Stevens. been enjoying her interviews with Stephen Jameson during this World Cup. She's won plenty of events and finally she dominated the giant slalom here in La Molina. She's also been winning plenty of medals at the Paralympic and World Champs over the last couple of years as well. So, okay. Very much in the early stages of her career at 22, or 21, should I say. Already some 7.87 seconds down. Towards the line then, 158.29. Lady knows what to do with a slalom course. She looked very good this morning. I likened it to dancing around the poles. It really was quick, sharp, glorious technique. And already 4.35 seconds separating Forster from the rest. And just the ease that Forster makes it look like. Also just 23. And no doubt that the winner of this one will be Annalena Forster. 6.01 seconds quicker than second place. It's a dominant performance. Well, the lady from Germany, Forster 152.28, Moraoka 158.29. Those two in front of Lolly Stevens, who gets third in 206.45. Germany, Japan, USA. Well, that completes all of the women's events here on day four of competition in La Molina. One more. Slalom event to come for them tomorrow. Let's go down to Stephen Jamieson, who's with our race winner. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm at the finish here with Annalena Forster. Annalena, congratulations. You're back on top of the podium. The first time we've had slalom in a long time. I bet you're delighted to have it back. Yeah, I'm so happy to have a slalom and to be yeah the first. It was a long time ago now, and uh, yeah, it feels good and. It's good for myself, yeah. Has it, I, I know slalom's always your favourite event. Has it almost made you want it to have it back more, having such a long break without it? We've had a lot of GS, obviously. We have, we've not done it since the World Championships, which now feels a long time ago. Has it made you want to get back to it even more? Yeah, uh, it's... <laughs> mm, I think it's better when uh, the slalom is in between sometimes. So you have uh, giant slalom and then slalom, giant slalom. Um, yeah, I think that's... I feel better when it's like that, but yeah, we have to do it how it, they planned it. <laughs> and you've now got plenty of slalom to look forward to. We look forward to watching you tomorrow and in Morzine as well. Congratulations today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's Annalena. Now it's Alan March. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. As we look back on the run of Annalena Forster. Again, all the women's events now done. Forster making her way through very simply and taking victory quite easily in the end. Well, Savard will not do it so easily. Miroslav Haraus is right behind him. De La Place already tasted World Cup victory here in La Molina. Will want to drink from the cup of winners again. Thank you. 
Now, young Neil Simpson from United Kingdom or Great Britain. He's from Scotland, that's a fact. Competes for the Gordon Skiers Club in Alford in Scotland. That brother Andrew alongside him. He was guided by uh, clubmate Jamie Robertson at times earlier this year as well with uh, Andrew not able to get out all the time because of his own education commitments. Simpson. Neil is just 16 so this is all very much about learning what he can and where he needs to improve. 242.58 Neil Simpson just before him. And the reason he's 48.6 seconds ahead is because Simpson had a real struggle in the first run. Looked much better in the second, but going smoothly as well. He with his guy Kurt Grimmelman. Simpson's time 46.95 to be precise 155.63 the American is through the line and a pass guided by Maxime Jordan these two are uh, aware of what it's like to win that opening day giant slalom success falling out on the first run of the second day would have hurt all you want to do after you win is build upon that success and that's exactly what De La Place is looking to do slide on Delaplace has clattered one of the poles now whether he's still in the course or not I'm unaware and Delaplace has gone across the line so he will register a time nobody asking for a review it would seem so 153 77 is now the new time Slav Harels, 3.18 seconds ahead. Slovakia have some fine VI skiers in the men's and the women's, of course. And we have to have dominant for quite a while in the women's category. Three seventy-seven. He'll be well inside, but it's whether he sets a quick enough time that will beat Thomas so hard. Away they go, and then a big yelp as they come out of the start gate. Savard needs a nice clean run. Needs to keep it quick. Kuran Lame talked on numerous occasions about 
how far these two get away from each other sometimes. It, whatever works for one doesn't always work for another. At the moment, Savard chasing 117.23. He's 0.31 up. We've already had one first time winner from France in the World Cup this week. Are we on for another? Oh, Savard! Just, just as he was looking so, so good. Oh, you can see the disappointment. Well, he gets a chance to come back and do it all over again. Oh, he's just straddled the gate. He knew it straight away. Right ski, the wrong side of that blue pole. And the frustration taken out. So, Miroslav Gereos takes it after a DNF for Thomas Savard, who said sport wasn't cruel. It certainly is for Savard. De La Place comes in in second position, 153, 7, 7. And more World Cup points for Kevin Burton, 155, 63, means he finishes in third position. Two more events to come in the men's section, of course, sitting and standing. Standing would be the first. And we're hoping to get a chat with Miroslav Hareos in a moment, but uh, I think we're waiting or a translator to come through. So hopefully we'll be able to bring you that interview in just a matter of moments. In fact, we can. Let's go down to Stephen Jameson. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm down at the finish line here with Miroslav Harris. Miroslav, congratulations. Not the way I'm sure you'd have liked to win with a DNF, but how nice is it to be on top of the podium again? How do you feel that you're back on the podium and that you're the first one? So, this race was hard for me. I fought. I'm glad that the second race came out. Sme skončili na prvom mieste a o, posledné preteky mi nevychádzali, ale tak som rád, že dneska to tak dopadlo. So uh, these uh, races are very hard for me because I am fighting a lot, but I am very happy that the second round went well because last the last uh, races uh, wasn't that that uh, that good, so I'm very happy that I am back on the podium. Wish you all the best for tomorrow as well, Miroslav. Congratulations. Alan, back to you. Always the way you want to win it, but winning is the name of the game after all. And Miroslav Harels now has lots of World Cup points to go to sleep with before a final day here in La Molina. Standing event, significantly less than we started with this morning. Jordan Bossan finished at the bottom of the table of people that did finish. Marta Balche, of course, finishing at the other end. Hussain has had a week full of mixed fortunes. There's been a fair few DNFs and some bumpy rides on the way down. Bottom. He's got a little off balance with about four gates to go, but he won't mind that. 153-83. Oh, 
but it's an early exit for Marcus Nilsson Grasto. He's uh, trying to recall the last time he DNF'd. He's been doing really well on the World Cup circuit. Youngster from Norway. However, early stages exit this time around. Yeah, just out of shot, he seems to uh, collide with one of the gates in a way that was unnatural. And down goes Grasto. And that gives us Kohei Takahashi. 18-year-old aspirations of making it to Beijing for the next Olympic Winter Game. Side the lead time so far. And the guy actually stretched that gap. As we say, already with one from two going down, you just never know how high you can finish in the overall standings today. Gahashi does stretch it, 2.43 ahead of Brossam on 51-4-0. Ben Dotti talked about this morning the fact that Yesterday, he was mortified to have fallen over at the first gate. It was a really innocuous tumble. Just couldn't quite get the rhythm out the gate. Oh, he's managed to survive a bit of a scare here in his second run of the slalom. What he'll be wanting to do is get two runs together and get himself across the line. All helps with the confidence. Dotti hits the line ahead of Tagahashi, so another new leader. And Dotti must now wait. Hiraku Sawa. 97.770, single leg skier. Point three one ahead. Stretching one point one nine for Nasawa. Inverts, a sixth place finisher in the World Championships. 25 year old. And we've been competing around about 2011. Well ahead. Oh, it's a good finish from Martin Verts. Real quality. 4-0-5 inside. Here yeah. comes the leader of the World Cup so far again. Odin Zagem. Oh, and feel the real struggle. 
He's going to stay inside the gates, but he's going to do tremendously well. Oh, and once it's in your head, it's hard to get away from it and feel really battling. He's remained on course somehow. Seven over for feeling that was to be expected after a couple of big mistakes. Oh, and he's missed the last gate as well. Thomas Feel. Well, you can see just what that means to him. Frustration oozing out. So, uh, Martin Wirtz continues to lead with just three left. Santeri Kivari. Such a relaxed and calm individual. Santeri Kivari, I'm sure people who know him better than I would disagree with that, but certainly when he's around the mountain. Point two two inside again great great work with the skis brilliant balance and composure again he's skiing just the use of one arm he tucks his right arm into his bib 142.56 2.64 seconds quicker than the previous leader Aaron Lindstrom next up to challenge for the top spot these will want to get to the bottom and then you lay in wait to see oh Lindstrom after a tremendous first run he now finds a difficulty out on the course chasing the time Set by Kivari. On 42.56, he's going to go and as much effort as uh, Lindstrom was going to put in, he was never going to claw that back. Lindstrom, very dramatic across the line. After Balche. Well, Marie Boche showed the women's standing class that she doesn't make mistakes. Will Arthur Boche do the French double in the standing? race on his time it would always have been whether he made a mistake inside the last gate no such word in the vocabulary of Arthur Bauche. what a performance the French are in charge of the standing division at the moment and he didn't take his foot off the gas at all did he Bauche, 132.67, Kivari, 142.56, and despite throwing himself at the line, Aaron Lindstrom just couldn't quite get his second place. But uh, it's podium place for a couple of 18-year-olds, and after Bauche, he isn't much older than that, is he? He's down there with Stephen Jameson. 
Yeah, thank you very much, Alan. Here with our winner, Alta Brochet. Alta, you've enjoyed Lamelina. You tasted defeat for the very first time yesterday. How nice is it to bounce back today in the slalom with a really fast ski? Yeah, I did a good ski in the first run. Uh, the second one was really dead. Uh, I, I don't do my ski, but it was enough to uh, keep uh, a victory, so I'm, uh, I'm really happy. And talk to me a little bit about yesterday because it was so, so close between yourself and Teo. We've, we've heard his side of things from the GS. What about your side as well? It was such a fantastic competition. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good competition with Teo. But yeah, today I was tired too. And yeah, it's, uh, it's him who, who led in the second one. But it's okay, he did a better ski. And it's like that one time. Him, one time me, it's okay for me. <laughs> and he says he hopes that you go well in the overall, that you go on to win it. How nice is that for you to hear? There's a lot of respect between you two. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good guy. And yeah, he, it's cool to, to say that. Uh, yeah, I will try to, to do uh, <laughs> my ski for, uh, for go uh, take the overall, but we, we will take uh, each race after each race and we will see what happens. <laughs> we will certainly see. Congratulations Thank today, you. fantastic Thank ski. You Alan Fatty. Thank you very much. It's amazing we fly through the day, don't we? Slalom, all the sitting men's category next. So big names missing, as you might have noted. No, you don't camp sure. So the world champion, one of many to have a problem. Slimnik of Slovenia, first to go. Um, Slovenian, mentioned previously, really enjoyed his time at the Gorda leg of the World Championships. He was twinned with Selena Vea. of people will come out and offer their support. In the category of those that are Constantly striving to improve. Certainly here on the World Cup circuit. Oh, just steadies himself. He was nearly turning the wrong way for that last game, but he hasn't. Nice little wave and smile from Jonas Slipnik. Yagas Suarez, third of the three Spaniards that have been competing today. Fifty-five point zero five seconds already inside the previous time. Yaga Suarez. Going okay. <laughs> Not that I want to jinx it. Twenty six years old. An accident in May of two thousand and one. Uh, here he is, two thousand and nineteen, competing with a yelp at the line as well. Okay. 
Thomas Meyer. One of three Dutch athletes that started the day. Two of the world champions went out. Meyer, on the other hand, here is building a lead over those that have been in front. Oh, what a big slide. Can he get back in? Yes, he can. Meyer, who had a couple of DNFs in the giant slalom events, will be keen to finish this, but that's not going to be as he takes out one of the poles. Meyer will come to a, a halt now. Just see him here. He'd already got out of shape a little before that section of gates and just couldn't quite regain momentum and movement as was needed. Alex Cairns only has four more to come after him, so he knows that a good run will give him an opportunity of a podium, especially with the volume of DNFs within the men's Sitski competition and the fact that the two leaders are bang level. They'll be putting everything in. Cairns playing the percentage game here. Get down in front of Espiaga Suarez. He's already six seconds above him, but got to remain mistake-free, Alex Cairns. Boris Meyer was trying to do exactly that. He's looking good for the Canadian so far. Originally born in Vancouver. Athlete with spina bifida. Into the bottom section then, final few gates. Keep it steady, keep it smooth, and he does. Alex Cairns leads with just four to come. Mori. Both the Japanese athletes started this morning. Mori able to get to the bottom, unlike Kano. Winner of a giant slalom here in La Molina. The eight-year-old power power lifter as well. He lift himself to another podium finish. Three more in front of him, but he's made a clean run, and that's the first start. He was six and a half seconds quicker than Keynes. Away goes Marcus Kvatterhofer. He's had issues out on the course this week. mind of playing it safe or going for it he was a little way behind Kirker and Pedersen does he try and chase those two or does he solidify third place Atterhofer will not want to fall behind Mori as he crosses this line
48.50. Oh, Gratterhofer has fallen behind. 0.57, exceptional work from Taiki Mori. And the Austrian you saw there, showcasing his disappointment. Now, Andrew Kirker and Jesper Pedersen both went 52-38. They are both characters that will leave everything out there on the course. Would I expect one of them to make a mistake? Yeah, absolutely. Throwing himself into it. Look at Kirker go. Both of these Paralympic champions in their own rights. And Kirker putting in a shift. He's behind Maury, though. That is interesting. Maury's time was 53-4-0. 1.02 separated the top four. And Taiki Maury's second run here is proving to be magnificent. Now Kirker has smashed through that gate. Question for the judges, maybe, as to whether he went the right side. But Kirker keeps on going. Can he find some speed at the bottom end? What an exciting finish to our first day of slalom. All Kirker gets caught up. 148.50. Oh, it's gone. Maury, the magnificent, has just one more that can stop him. Jesper Pedersen, final athlete of the day. All the success was his in Zagreb. Enter Taiki Mori to the fray. Hvatahofer couldn't get past Mori. Andrew Kirker couldn't get past Mori. What can the young Norwegian do? Bouncing around the corners. He's well up, 1.16. Remember, he started 1.02 ahead of Maury, just the same as Kirker. Pedersen has managed to stretch that lead. Can he? Can he maintain it? Final few gates, 148.50. It's good from Pedersen. And the Norwegian World Cup leader carries on the victorious raise of the arms. Pedersen very much happy with that. Well, he brings us to a close with a rather magnificent performance. Taiki Mori, it's a round of applause for him as well. Finishing in second from fourth. He did the work to get past Gratterhofer. Kirker was one one hundredth of a second quicker than the Austrian. Mori in second, 148.50. But it's Jesper Pedersen in a time of 146.99 that takes it. Just the one DNF this afternoon. We'll go and speak to Stephen Jameson. He's with Jesper Pedersen. Yeah, thank you very much, Alan. Our final winner of the day is Jesper Pedersen. Jesper, it's been a little while since I've said that. I know you've been itching to get back on top of this podium. How's it feel to do it? It feels really good. It's great to be back on the top. And uh, the slalom today was really good, yeah. And how much have you been looking forward to the slalom? It's been so long since we've had a slalom. It, everyone seems to be really excited about it. Were you the same? Yeah, we're the same. I've been struggling a bit in the giant slalom these couple of days, so... It's nice to be back here. And how did you find the conditions out there? Because they were so different from run one to run two. I entirely different races almost. Yeah, in the first run it was a bit icy. Uh, and the second run it was like really not icy. So yeah, it was cool. And it was a great run. And you get to share the podium, I know, with a couple of people that you really like. Some people you wouldn't have expected to see up there with you as well. <laughs> mentioning no names, but that must be quite nice for you too. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we'll let you get off and enjoy the celebrations. Congratulations once again. Alan, back to you. A fascinating day of slalom skiing. Pedersen punches his way through the line. And as soon as he clocks his time, that's how he celebrates. Well, that brings us 
to an end of our penultimate day here in La Molina in Spain. The World Para Alpine Skiing World Cup continues tomorrow. It's another day of slalom action. Don't miss it. We'll see you tomorrow.